Hi, I'm Nick Doherty, part of Team TaylorMade, and I'm down at European HQ seeing how preparations are going for Royal St. George's. So let's have a little look in the tour workshop then, and we're gonna pick the brain of Mark. Mate, good to see you. Thank good you for having us in. This is your world. It this is, This is yeah. like the static version of the tour truck, right? Pretty much, yeah. This is, uh, for Sam, Alex and me, this is like our second home. So we pretty much, I guess, base the tour truck on, on how we set up here in terms of the drawers and all the tools and machinery and everything. So we can everything we can do on the tour truck, we can do in here. Well, obviously you guys are out and about on the European tour throughout the season, but this is a bit different. Royal St. George is one of the yeah. big ones, if not the biggest. Yeah. How do you prepare differently for that? Well, it's obviously the only major in Europe, so it's kind of our major for the year, if you like. So it's the biggest event on our calendar. So we've obviously got all the icon players, all our US-based players coming over, and it's quite often, you know, with you know, guys like DJ and that, it might be the only time we see them all year. So we've got to make sure we're covered in terms of their shafts, their grips. Uh, all their soft goods so there's a lot of kind of talk back and forward with the US team and uh, yeah just making sure we're set up really and we've got everything that they might need for the week. Yeah well you do a great job you guys really do. I've never been in here before obviously I've been on the truck a ton of times but yeah. uh, take us through like give us a little tour around here what's going on in this sort of area what, what stuff Okay, yeah well here? obviously you can see the drawers just like you would have seen on the um, on the truck really so this is where we keep our product we'll actually carry a lot more product in here because this is our kind of headquarters if you yeah. like for our you know, apart from PJ Tour, we do a lot of, you know, South African stuff, Australia stuff, elite amateurs program, ladies. So we have to carry a lot of products and a lot of the events that we're going out to in maybe Asia, Australia, something like that. Everything comes out of this workshop here. You know, we've got different setups. You can obviously all the different lofts through the woods that they want, but you've got something which is some, it's unique in mm -hmm. terms of what it can deliver. You yeah. can actually change the woods with their lofts and, and set up now yeah. through a bending machine, which is cool, right? That yeah, must be so nice this, to have that. Definitely, this is one of the machines, I guess, that is, I guess, a bit unique to the, the tour department. Um, it's where we can measure the exact loft and lie of any metal wood, uh, irons as well, putters, it can do every club, but essentially we would just screw the wood in like this. Uh, you line this up so you can test the lie angle here. So you get the line up the grooves with the top line here, and then you measure the pins. So this gives you the loft here, and yeah. this gives you the exact lie. So we can check the exact loft and lie of any club. And then what we'll have is we'll have a database of specs. So any club that goes in play, mm -hmm. we'll put on our database here, and we share that with the US team, or the US team will share it with us, with their, their players. You know, the exact loft of every guy's driver, the exact lie angle, right through the bag really, right through to putter. So uh, it's, it's things like this that just allow us to work with those kind of finer details. I yeah, guess, that's that... cool. I thought of something that I'd love for Christmas. Yeah, go on. I have, I just, one second, bear with, bear with. I've, uh, I happened to walk by as I came in and saw, and saw this, which always gets my attention when I see this label, right? You, you, you can see, it says Tiger on it. So uh, we're talking hybrids. Yeah. Uh, again, you don't have to, but if you did want to get me anything for Christmas, then yeah. you know, it would be quite nice. I am a collector. That one's um, not leaving the world. Tell me about cool. this then, because I've not seen this before. And also, yeah. but actually, before you tell me about the club or, or, or about hybrids as well, yeah. what's that like? Getting to obviously, you know, Tiger being mm. part of, of Team Taylor Made, mm. what's it like getting to work with a guy with that brain and that sort of quality and talent? Yeah, well, he, I mean, we, it's very rare that you get the opportunity to work with him. So, like I say, it might just be the occasional major that we see him at. So, this one, this particular club was actually from uh, Port Rush a couple of years ago. So, uh, and he basically came to the truck. I think it was, it was on the Sunday. So, it was you know, very early on, and we were there just kind of preparing all the bags and not really thinking we were going to be too busy on a yeah. Sunday. And along comes Tiger with his agent, basically saying, I've got this five wood, I love my five wood, can you build me a two iron in exactly the same length? Yeah. So we had to kind of explain to him that that's going to be really heavy and we kind of wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. He was like, just build it anyway, well, I want to give it a go. Yeah. So, um, and obviously he didn't play it because it's, it's still here in our office, but it's quite a cool talking point. So it's amazing, a lot of people that yeah. come through the door, they all kind of, <laughs> they all see that Tiger one. has that effect on us all, right? Because it's yeah. like, and, and to be able to pick the brains of someone who's done what he's done is, yeah. that is unique because there's no one quite like Tiger Woods. Yeah. What's he like in terms of his understanding his equipment? Like, I mean, is he up the charts? phenomenal, is he? yeah. Like really? more so than any other pro, I think, that we you'd ever worked with. Not that I've had to, you know, got to work with him too much. I've only met him two times, but 
Um, just from the stories you hear from, you know, Keith and our US team, and um, there's another guy on the European tour that plays with him back home quite a bit, and you hear the stories about them chipping around and how he, you know, he tries every different shot in the bag. And I think even when he came asking for this one, it was him just going, look, I don't know if it's gonna work, but let me try it and figure it out and, s and see what works anyway. So from our kind of technical standpoint, we were saying, a two iron at a five wood length is going to be really heavy and probably not going to work. But he was yeah. like, ah, oh, just build it anyway. I want to hit it and see. Amazing. So, um, so yeah, that was quite a cool story. Awesome, Mark. Thanks very much. I'm just going to take this with me for now. Uh, and if no one notices, yeah. I'll, I'll take it with me all the way to my car at the end of the day. There's security so, at the door. Yeah, OK. Well, I'll try anyway. <laughs> Thanks, mate. I'm all right, move across. We're going to find Sam. Uh, and we're going to look at some shafts now, and you're, this is the, like, it's the toy shop for shafts, it's amazing. Uh, Sam, thanks for your time, mate. Um, I'm just going to keep all of this to lean on for the moment, well, okay? that's not leaving, is it? <laughs> that, that, that two arm's not going anywhere, unfortunately. I'm good at stuff like this. I'm good He's going to want that back eventually. Yeah, so. I'd imagine so. Um, talk me through this. Yep. So guys, come and have a little look at this, because this is incredible. It looks like every possible shaft under the sun available here. Uh, first of all, how important is this aspect of every golf club? We talk about the heads and what we can do uh, with tailor-made golf with all the different heads and opportunity to bend and the rest of it. What about the shaft? How key is this? I think it's obviously, for us, it's great to have as many options as possible, because what we're trying to do is fine-tune a feel and performance and, and having this array of shafts allows us to find that best combination. Yeah. So when we're doing a fitting session, you can look at certain shafts that will be for that player. So if I'm working with guys that I've worked with previously, for example, Robert McIntyre, mm -hmm. I know what sort of feel of shaft he's looking for. So when we bring out a new product, we're looking at you know that sort of bend profile, that sort of spin characteristics. So having all of these options, whether it's a several different brands that we have here. We're very fortunate that we get great support from all of these guys. Um, so it's just a case of, you know, finding the best option, get him to hit it, see which one we like, and then is there anything we can do with the head to make it perform? Well, let's best. go and show him down here yep. with the business end where all the folks are. Um, so this is our team tailor-made shaft rack. So yeah. everyone that we look after, staff player, we've got some uncontracted guys that we, we look after as well. We like just to keep a backup of everything yeah. in here. So when we go and stop the truck, we'll take from their player slot in here and then we'll use out of our other shaft racks to replenish what we have here. Okay, well, let's go. We've talked about the shaft. Let's go all the way up to the very end of the club and talk a bit about the grip as well yep. because we've got a cool little machine over here. Yep. I'll just lead you over with my club. <laughs> yeah. So this is obviously, th this is like a bespoke piece of kit for you, isn't yep. it? So basically, we uh, it was before my time at Taylor Maintenance. I think it's been in here for you know ten to fifteen years, to be honest. Um, but we do get it serviced. Um, it's just it works on like a compressor unit where the club will go in. Mm -hmm. So if I just do, a, I'll just show you something yeah. here. So we'll just put the club in, and we'll just lock it in. So you can get the golf club nice and square. The tape is here that we'll obviously just put on the thing, and then we have a pedal which brings the fluid out, yeah. and it all recycles back in. So oh, every that's cool. you know, once a year or so, we'll change out the fluid and put yeah. new fresh stuff in, um, and, the, and the grips will take 10, 10 minutes to go off, and then you're good to go. Great stuff. So I'm going to leave you to it. I'm cool. going to head over and find Mark again because we're going to talk golf balls. Perfect. Okay. So I'll go this way. I'll meet you on the other side. Let's go and have a little look and a talk about golf balls, Mark. Um, here we are. Yep. That's quite, actually, you know what, that's quite an even split. TP5, TP5X, I was feeling, because I'm an X guy, yeah. I thought it was more of a lean that direction, but it actually appears that across our guys, it's, it's fairly, fairly even, right? Yeah, definitely, I would say. And actually, we've just had one more guy switch to a five here, so I'd say pretty much an even split there, really. That's, uh, Sergio's moved to the five. Yes. Or why has he moved from X to five? I think he, from what I understand, it was more of um, his control of his knockdown shots as much as anything. He was right. getting like a truer or exactly how he liked to see the ball flight when he knocked it down. He was actually getting a better kind of more receptive response to the five ball than he was getting off the X. The X is obviously a little bit lower spin, so perhaps it was dropping out the sky a little right. quicker than he'd like, something like that. So, uh, yeah, we'll find out when we get to the open, I guess. I love the fact that when they win tournaments well, they get their own numbers as well. It's really, really cool. Yeah. Um, but I also love the fact that Ricky uses the picks ball. Tell me why. What's the, what's the theory behind why Ricky loves that ball? Um, well, I know he obviously had a big say in the design of it. So he was very much involved in, you know, he tested our ball a, good, a couple of years ago now. Uh, loved it straight away. And I think there was a lot of talk. I love the ball, but you know, he was looking for something to aid his putting mm. and um, the role and aim on his putting. So he was very much involved in that early stage design of the picks ball. So that's pretty much, you know, uh, his and Taylor made a kind of creation between the two of them, really. And it's obviously taken off, and we've got other guys 
I think Matt Wolf is is playing it now. Mm. Uh, one or two guys over this side as well. So yeah, that was very much I would say a Ricky Fowler kind of. Uh, brainchild, if you like, and then a creation with TaylorMade. Love that. Uh, mm. There's something I have just spotted behind me while I'm in here as well. Yeah. Um, so I think we might go and have a look at it. They're in the boxes, so yeah. they're ready to go. But on the front, we can see got DJs, Tommies, Colin Morikawa's, and Rory McIlroy. So I'm going to have a little look here. Let's have a look. These are the bags for all St. George's, aren't they? They These are. are mega. I love the fact, you know, I did love the one that we just saw as well. I think uh, that was one of my favourites. Oh, yeah, my the God. San Diego. It's, yeah, one. it's super chill. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. it's, all, it's, all, well, it's not about my yeah. golf games, far from that. But it's I all did the love detail it. that goes into it as well. Yeah, all the little it, kind of it details. Really is. Yeah. The I insides. Love this. And, look yeah. at all the little detail. Like, but it, this is it's the lining, isn't it? Mm. Look at that. Because obviously it's sandwiched. So look, little sandwiches on the inside. I love it. So when's, where's, which one's mine, bud? Um, I think we better check out back in the warehouse somewhere, maybe. <laughs> well, might not be with these guys, no. When you qualify, Nick, then we'll uh, we'll get you one lined wow. up. That's all. <laughs> that's just all the detail, mate. That's all the detail. Um, I love all this. This is also. I think it's time to go and have a look at the truck. Yeah. Let's go. Let's yeah, get let's on the go. truck. Yeah, okay, we're about to load go. this lot up. So uh, I'll yeah, take let's this with me out. so I can find my way. All right. Cheers, <laughs> Mark. So here we are on the truck now. Uh, and this is a place that I do know well. Uh, Mark, here we go, what are you doing? You're stocking up here. So I'd imagine yep. at the start of the week for Royal St. George's, everyone's gonna come on, on here and pick up their bits and bobs because it's all a bit different, isn't it? Like that, those head covers look a it bit It is, nifty. yeah, I was just loading a few of the head covers. So, you know, come St. George's, we'll have, you know, the head covers, putter covers, everything in all of these player slots or everyone that's playing. So obviously it's just come back from a few weeks on the road. So yeah. it's a little bit empty. So in preparation for St. George's, we'll, you know, get a list of all the players that are playing. We'll we'll get their name slots in there, and we'll load up with um, usually four dozen balls, six gloves, uh, four hats, and then your kind of custom open head covers. Let's look yeah. at Tommy's because you've already sort of semi got this ready. Yeah. These head covers are mega. Um, obviously, to fit with what Tommy is using now yeah. in the TP um, with the putter. But these are really cool, and again, all bespoke for um, for this major in particular at Royal yeah. St George's. Um, this is interesting though as well. The uh, oh, so the balls are all at the back as well. How many dozen balls do they get? Normal week is three dozen, and right. but for a major we'll do four dozen usually. It's DJ a... normally takes six. I think he throws six. I think he likes uh, throwing a few away in one, uh, when he's not using them. So we normally give he normally requests six dozen. So see, it's not like us. We use them <laughs> until they're not round anymore. Exactly. Yeah. yeah I suppose <laughs> even when you're at the peak, you've got to do this thing. Now look at this. Oh, this is for tees. These are Tommies. Yeah. Um, I'm going to hazard a guess knowing him that these are Everton tea pegs. That's right, yeah. Blue He's such Everton. a lovely lad with such terrible taste, right? <laughs> yeah, well, each to their own. Uh, I actually, this is cool. I mean, I suppose you've really made it when you've got your, your own yeah. tea pegs. And uh, I've actually, heard yeah, all of, our icon, all of our icon players, they have their, their special sort of custom tea. So again, in preparation for a major will kind of load up each with a little pack of their own teas. This will be busy, it's going to be packed out. I mean, I know you're in the process, yeah. so I'm not going to keep you too long because I know you've got to get the, the truck ready to go. Uh, let's talk a bit of putters while we're here though as well, because uh, these are all part of the new ranges that, that we've got with Taylor May Golf. Um, and let's talk about a few in particular. I know how popular that Spider X has been for Taylor May, but obviously this is the new one. Yep. Spider EX. What's the what's the big difference here? And you anticipating a lot of the guys move into this in time? Yeah, I think so. We've had a lot of interest. Uh, I think we first took it out maybe just in Qatar, so maybe a couple of months ago. So we've had mm -hmm. a lot of interest, especially because of the some of the cool custom options we can do on tour in terms of the sight lines. But it is following on from a hugely yeah. successful putter in the Spider X. That's been our number one model for three, four years now, mm. and um, it's been a real hit. But there's definitely going to be guys migrating to this one. And like I say, we've got different neck options, different sight line options we can do. Yeah. There's a kind of slightly thicker face and this um, fluted shaft, so all designed to kind of improve the feel to the player. Yeah, I love that. Uh, move. There's actually quite an interesting story as well because there's been a shift for Morikawa recently again with putting. Yeah. This is part of them. He uh, used my TP, didn't he? TP, I believe he did, yeah. So he actually uses um, the Juno, which is just basically a different sight line option. So yeah. you can see the sight line on the back. The Juno's got the top sight line. So, and then it's got the custom design like anyone, I guess, can, any customer can go online and, and choose the colors and all their cool custom options that they do now. But we're kind of pretty excited, I think, to have this TP range because. 
you know, we've always been known for our technology putters, like yeah. such as the Spider X, but already there's been a real quick take up, like Charlie Hole's using this, Morikawa, as you say, uh, Tommy, DJ, yeah. Bob McIntyre, they've all kind of pretty quickly moved into this TP range. So it's yeah. quite cool for us to have something different to offer than just the technology putters. Is this the club that changes the most with tour players in terms of when they fiddle? Yes, I would say absolutely. So. Um, yeah, well, quite often, I mean, this, this putter bag, we go through quite a lot of options. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll stock it up. Every time the truck's back, we'll have to restock this because, you know, every week you've got a handful of guys coming on that have maybe struggled that week on the greens or they're looking for a bit of inspiration and they come on and talk to us, you know, what have you got? Like, what can, what can I take a look at? What can I take out onto the practice green? Um, so, yeah, I, I would say the putter bag is definitely one well, the putters in general is the club that players will turn over. More. Is that because the shift in feel, it, it could be greater with, with like, if you move from between these two putters, for instance, it's yeah. fundamentally different, right, in terms of how it's going to look and feel. Hugely, is that, yeah. do you think, why players do mess around a lot? Because as much as they're not blaming the equipment, mm. they're looking for something just to have a, a shift in feel to change just the, the Yeah, how just they're the same doing. as any club golfer, really. Yeah. I mean, you're looking for a bit of inspiration. And you know, you know, most of the guys out there will relate that you get a new putter, sometimes you get a bit of a buzz and you putt yeah. well for a few weeks with it. And, and tour players are just the same. At the end of the day, they're, they're always looking for something to improve. And if, if they feel like their putting's not been up to scratch, they're looking for that kind of new putter buzz a lot of the time. So I think that's probably why we have more kind of a higher turnover on putters, mm. I'd say, than any other club. Um, I'm going to take a little walk through now uh, and we're going to have a look at the building area. Mark, I'll see you in a little bit. I thank you for all that. And I'm, I'm just glad I've still got a cubby hole. <laughs> so uh, let's have a wander through here. Uh, we're going to find Sam and Alex in here doing their thing. Uh, and effectively, Sam, I suppose the first thing I want to know is we saw everything that went on in the tour workshop yep. and what that all had in there. How does that reflect what I'm seeing on the tour truck? Well, basically, the tour truck is just sort of like our addition to what we're trying to achieve in there. But it's just in a, in a more smaller area and, and just built for efficiency, really. So the way the wor it works is we have, a, like you say, a smaller area in here, but it's all condensed and we have the right amount of stock for each event we go to. Um, so on this side of the truck is like our building side. So you can imagine that we have everything that we need to build a golf club here is we have all of our weights, the cutting machine, the grinding wheels and where we finish it. Um, so this is where Alex will normally spend his time where he'll pick a you know, a wedge or whatever we're trying to build. And we'll probably build a lot of these at St. George's. Um, so we're just stocking these now. Um, we'll pick all of the components. Everything's component format. Um, so like just a, like in the tour office, we, we do build straight from scratch on the truck and it's yeah. just, you know, it's a, it's a quick it's a quick turnaround time, 25 minutes for a driver, and yeah. normally out on the range, ready to go, yeah. um, and then about an hour for a set of irons. So. Wow. One of the things you were saying that, mm. that is obviously going to have to be really on top of for this uh, particular major at Royal St. George's is the wedges, because they're yeah. going to want the zero bounce. So you're going to talk us through as Alex actually yeah. put them away here. What, how does that all work? So basically, you know, we, we, we will count as how many wedges we need. We'll look at the entry list. We, we look at what players are gaming already. Um, and we'll just think about if they're in a high toe, you know, and what high toe wedge do they play so far? You know, do they play a 10 degree bounce where they're playing on a tighter turf? Could they benefit from having a seven? Or, you know, how do they play their certain shots? So one thing that we'll do here is we'll kind of put these wedges in, but we'll have a good under understanding of who we're going to build wedges for that week. Cool. So that's definitely going to be a club that yep. we're going to see some alterations to, definitely. some movement in some of the guys' bags. Uh, also, though, Alex, we're going to have a look at some driving irons for yeah. might be different. So where you might want a standard hybrid, you're going to move now to perhaps something that's more bespoke for a Lynx challenge. Yep. So what are our options here, guys? So we've got obviously 790 in our UDI. We've also got the new Sim UDI, which we've got for this year. As you can see, we have got countless of uh, irons here. So we've got two irons and three irons for the guys that split combo sets between like a 790, 770. Right. Um, and we've obviously got some 770s as well for the guys that want to mix and match. The DHY is another option for us, which is like mm. your traditional driving iron. So I can see a few of those going into play or yeah. definitely getting tested. Um, but I think for us, I think most of the guys now, we, we talked to previously that the, the, the season pros will travel to the open, no, to Royal St. George's with, yeah. 
with a driving iron or with a two iron. So yeah. they, they kind of have those clubs already. But we're just like, like you say, this is probably the most draw that we're attacking the most, to be honest, making sure we've got the most amount of stock possible on here. And when would the trucks sort of roll in for a major then? And what day would it get there? And what sort of hours are we looking at you guys doing? Because um, I imagine there's, there's plenty yeah. to do and they don't always come at like, hey, it's two o'clock in the afternoon. Fancy this, it sometimes yeah. might be six o'clock at night. I need you to fix yeah, this yeah. or, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. so how does that all work for you guys? I mean, we never have set hours. <laughs> we don't do it. I mean, we'll, 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 we normally say that we'll be on the truck at half past seven in the morning um, and then we just leave when the job's done. Sometimes yeah. with all without lunch whatever I mean yeah. it's just you just carry on you just look forward to, to finishing sometimes but um, I think that the truck is going to plan to get there on the Saturday will be sighted on Saturday um, and it's an official practice day on the Sunday so we'll be there from Sunday the truck at the uh, the St George's will actually stay there all week right, um, okay. which is different to any other yeah. European tour event because it's got to go on to the next one so what we we keep the truck there for for the duration of the week um, and we'll just you know, we'll kind of watch the golf or, you know, if there's any urgent repairs, hopefully yeah. there's no, you know, nothing that goes wrong, but we'll just be on site just because of where the trucks are parked and with fans and stuff like that. We just like to keep it there for, so for people to see the truck. Guys, I know you're going to be busy, so uh, thanks for having me on and good luck. Thank you. Hope no you well. Cheers. I hope you've enjoyed this behind the scenes look with TaylorMade Golf. I know I have, and best of luck to Team TaylorMade at this year's major at Royal St. George's.